How many articles about Guantanamo Bay did you write? Did you call George Bush a war criminal? Coming to the United States of America, who can forget Guantanamo Bay? I'm not even talking about how the Americans invaded Iraq, whereas Iraq or Saddam Hussein had nothing absolutely to do with 9-11. It no longer surprises anybody when an American, he takes an automatic weapon to a college campus or a school or a shopping mall and sprays everybody, killing half a dozen, one dozen people. Jain friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, don't forget to press the bell icon. The Washington Post has, uh, you know, put up on its front page the story that apparently an Indian research and analysis wing, raw operative or a raw officer by the name of Vikram Yadav was the person who tried to kill Gurpatwan Singh Pannu and somehow the Americans got a whiff of the plot and they exposed the plot, etc, etc, etc. Now, this obviously reads like a Hollywood pot boiler, but here is what it is. And they said that no, the raw tried to kill Pannu and anybody other than Pannu who was speaking ill against India, India has been trying to silence him. Now, again, no proof given. You know, uh, the article, I've read that article, that article does not say that they have proof. They have just named unnamed sources. And as usual, because it is the Washington Post, it can get away with murder. Right? Uh, there are a lot of things uh, which I need to discuss with you today, but uh, this is addressed to all the NRIs there in the US. This whole thing about that. India is sending killers or India is sending a team. The word they use is India sent a team to get uh, uh, Gurupatwan Singh Pannu. So India sent a team, the team got Nijjar, etc, etc. All these are insinuations. But I want to understand and I want to tell the Americans one thing and I think the NRI should help me there, you know. If Raw had sent a team to get Pannu, we would have been speaking about Pannu in the past tense. Right? It is, it is normal for countries to indirectly do surveillance in other countries. It's normal. The Russians have done it in India. The Israelis have done it in America. Their closest allies. The Israelis have done it in America. The Americans have done it in India. The Indians have done it in America. The Indians have done it in the... I mean, this keeps on going on. So if somebody says that Raw put a surveillance on a guy in the US, all right, and Raw does not have to do it themselves, you know, the research and analysis wing does not have to say that, okay, here are these guys and they're going to do surveillance or they're going to knock off or they're going to take executive action against a guy in the US. No, they don't have to do it. Why should they expose themselves? That's a stupid thing to do for anybody. In America, America has uh, the most per capita guns in the world. Nobody has more guns per person than the Americans. They have the Second Amendment. And there is widespread gun violence in America, perhaps the most of any country. It's, it's, it no longer surprises anybody when an American, he takes an automatic weapon to a college campus or a school or a shopping mall and sprays everybody, killing half a dozen, one dozen people. It does not raise eyebrows any longer. There is no longer any debate whether the NRI should support it, not support it. NRI needs to look inwards. There is no longer any debate. It's, it's just par for the course. It's taken as a very American thing. Mass shootings, mass casualties. There are hundreds every year. Hundreds, literally. Every single year. In the United States of America. So if, if Raw wanted to get rid of Pannu, let's say. If Raw said that, okay, Pannu is... Pannu hasn't done anything, actually. You know why I'm very suspicious of Washington Post's claim and the Americans' claim is that Pannu hasn't done anything so far. Pannu only speaks bad English. His only crime is that he speaks, uh, you know, Terrible English with a very pronounced and very prominent uh, accent and uh, all he does is half-baked threats. I'll shut down the airport and I'll have the parliament attacked and planes are going to fall out of the sky. He's done nothing till now. But, you know, we may have declared Pannu a terrorist, but I, I think Pannu is a joke here. I don't think Pannu is even a terrorist. He's a joke. You know, you have, to ha you have to do something. You have to pay for it. Like, for example, Osama bin Laden. He might not have been directly involved in an attack, but he trained people. He paid for it. He planned. Pannu neither paid anybody. Rather, Pannu got paid, okay? Pannu did not execute an attack. He did not have an attack executed. He did nothing. This is a man with a cheap Chinese camera 
and a YouTube account. That is what Pannu does actually. And I don't think that the Indian intelligence agencies would want Pannu dead. Yeah, if there's a terrorist threat, sure. Also the fact that the way Pannu reacts sometimes and the way he passes statements against India and way he has a calendar in front of him. So this is the day when the Indian parliament was attacked. So uh, 10 days before that, I'm going to threaten. Or this is the day, you know, that, uh, it's going to be 15th of August and I'm going to threaten. It's going to be 26th of January and I'm going to threaten. So it's all calendar based with Pannu. And it has been investigated multiple times and there is no credible threat. He, he's just, he's just shooting in the sky. But now, with this, I come to uh, a very prominent and a very important point here, ladies and gentlemen. Does India have a right to take executive action against people who work against its national interest? I'm not talking about critics. I'm not talking about critics. I'm not talking about critics of uh, Prime Minister Modi's policies. I'm not talking about critics of India's policies. No, you're welcome to criticize. You're welcome to go to town. You're welcome to create whatever you wish to create. There is no problem. There is no problem at all. But if you indulge in terrorist acts, if you support, finance, train or motivate terrorists, or if you try to create a terror cell outside of India that is detrimental to India's national security, does India have the right to take executive action or not? This is my question to our viewers today. And please, I would request you to write in the comment section. Does India have the right today? As an Indian, I would say yes. America had every right to go into Abbottabad and kill Osama bin Laden. Now, Osama bin Laden himself did not pilot those planes and smash them into the World Trade Towers. He did not put that plane down in the Pentagon. He did not train those hijackers. And yet, he funded them, he directed them, he passed orders. And that makes him complicit and this is why uh, SEAL Team 6 entered Abbottabad, entered his house, killed him. Killed a couple of his family members, took away his dead body. And President of the United States, President Obama, no less, announced to the American people that we have killed Osama bin Laden. So here's the thing. Countries take executive action. Okay. And uh, I, I, I just wonder, and I'm asking this to the NRIs, I just wonder... Does India have a similar right or this right is only reserved for white countries? Why do I say white countries? Why do I bring this factor of a race in between? So, Canada has every right to send thousands of troops to Afghanistan. Now, the Afghans did nothing to Canada. Al-Qaeda did nothing to Canada. I don't even I, I don't even believe Al Qaeda knows where Canada is. Yes, they attacked America. Yet, uh, Canada chose to accompany the United States of America and said that this is a war against terrorism and we must all join in. Well and fine. And Canadian troops were accused of the worst human rights violations. You know, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Libya. They were tried. Many of them were sentenced. Coming to the United States of America, who can forget Guantanamo Bay? I'm not even talking about Iraq. I'm not even talking about how the Americans invaded Iraq, whereas Iraq or Saddam Hussein had nothing absolutely to do with 9-11. Saddam Hussein did not even know that 9-11 happened. He had no clue. This man's country was attacked. He was hung. Not that Saddam Hussein was a paragon of virtue. He wasn't. He was the devil incarnate. And perhaps, you know, the people of Iraq got justice when he was hung. But the point is, how can you invade a country just like that? So it is okay for America to have CIA torture cells in Guantanamo Bay. It's okay for America to keep people in prison for decades and decades without ever seeing the face of a judge. It's okay for America to tell its lackeys like President Parvez Musharraf of Pakistan in which he personally ordered the kidnapping. You heard that right. The President of Pakistan ordered the kidnapping of 4,000 Pakistanis and he sold them as Al-Qaeda operatives to the United States of America. 4,000. 
This is by his own admission. And you can check Pakistani media. They'll tell you. Not social media, mainstream media, the newspapers. They'll tell you. How Parvez Musharraf sold 4,000 Pakistanis, innocent Pakistanis to the Americans, saying that this guy is from Al-Qaeda. Because the Americans said that for every Al-Qaeda operative, we'll give you these many dollars. This was God sent for Parvez Musharraf. He said, fine, you give me the money. The money belongs to Parvez Musharraf. Now don't worry. You will have more Al-Qaeda inside American jails than actually exist on planet Earth. And so he started. He sent the ISI. They, they, they caught hold of these people. Vegetable vendors. People working, somebody working in a, in a cloth shop. Person, person selling fruits. A school teacher. Suddenly everybody in Pakistan became Al-Qaeda. And they sold them to the Americans. The Americans also at that point in time, anger is one thing. But they had become so angry that they did not look at good or bad. They lashed out at everybody across the board. And hundreds and thousands of people were kept in solitary confinement. They were tortured. Some of them were tortured for decades. People went crazy. They went out of their minds. And the Americans did it. So the Americans can do whatever they wish. The Americans can attack countries. They can hang presidents and prime ministers. They can have innocent people kidnapped from third countries. They can give money to despots and dictators and have this done. They can put them in Guantanamo Bay, do waterboarding, give them electrical shocks to, you know, I heard, for the, I heard waterboarding, about waterboarding for the first time when they, uh, you were telling us about Guantanamo Bay. You know, those the people discussing this and they said that there's waterboarding and I said, what in God's name is this? So they said that, no, the person lies down, then you put a cloth on his face and then pour water or something like that. It gives the impression to him that he's drowning, etc. So, Electrical shocks on people's private parts. That is what America did. And the, the innocent people. Many of them were Pakistanis, by the way. Innocent. Absolutely innocent Pakistanis. Fruit and vegetable vendors. And when the pain got too much. I'm just telling you because you need to know the context. When the pain got too much. There's the story of a Pakistani vegetable vendor. He's picked up from uh, Karachi. Karachi is incidentally uh, Pakistan's largest city and uh, contributes the maximum amount to their GDP. So this vegetable vendor, he was uh, tortured by the Americans in Guantanamo Bay and he held out for a very long time. And one day he just broke down and this guy who had never heard of Al-Qaeda in his life, he never even heard of Al-Qaeda in his life, he admitted that he was Al-Qaeda because he wanted to make the pain stop. He was so desperate for the pain to stop, he said, okay, yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. I am the one, I am the one. So this has been going on. I mean, how can America tell India that, hey, you know, there is a guy called Vikram Yadav who works for Roy and he planned a hit on one of our citizens. You planned a hit on countries. You've devastated countries. You've wiped out wedding parties in Afghanistan and frontier Pakistan, you know, frontier areas of Pakistan, that Khyber Pakhtunkhwa area. Entire wedding parties, 40, 50 people, 30 people. Dancing, singing, going for a wedding, right? And 40,000 feet above the ground, there is a predator drone. And somebody in the deserts of Arizona presses the enter button on the laptop. A hellfire missile goes, hits the bus. The entire wedding party is vaporized. This is what America did, by the way. And today, that same United States of America is telling India that, hey, you, you tried to kill somebody here in America. And uh, India has uh, rubbished this report and India has said that this is unwarranted and unsubstantiated and they said there is an ongoing investigation of the high level committee set up by the government of India to look into the security concerns shared by the US government on networks of organized criminal terrorists and other speculative and irresponsible comments on it are not helpful. Meanwhile, the White House said that India is taking allegations regarding the assassination of Gurpatan Singh Pannu. Seriously, it however refrained from commenting on the FBI probe into the matter in the criminal case filed by the Department of Justice. So, uh, you know, all these people, America has, uh, uh, you know, said that India is already doing the investigations and we have nothing more to add. So, America is trying to certainly, you know, cool down these allegations, etc. But, you know, the Western media, they'll keep on. And I, I don't know how many... I'm sure they must have written articles, but I'd like to ask the Washington Post and the New York Times, how many articles about Guantanamo Bay did you write? Did you call George Bush a war criminal? You should have. 
you can't invade the wrong country. See, I can understand that you go out to kill a guy and you kill the wrong guy. Even that is reprehensible because if you kill an innocent guy, but uh, you know, you want to kill Tom, you aim at Dick and you end up killing Harry. That is one part of it. The second part of it is you believe that Tom, Dick and Harry are in UK. You have credible reports that Tom, Dick and Harry are in UK. And you end up bombing Namibia in Africa. It doesn't make any sense. The Americans did that. And to this date, nobody has been punished. Maybe some middle or junior level officers, but nobody in the senior management, quote unquote, or the senior decision making of America. They were the people who ordered the invasions. Nothing has been done. Nothing. And here, they dare question the world's largest democracy. An absolute and an utter shame. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the question and answers. The first question is from Kaushik Jain Major Jain Kaushik Ji. Since there is an increase in Houthi attacks on international vessels and Indian Navy coming to rescue, will there be chances of India getting into a warlike situation with the Houthis, which is supported by Iran? No. I don't see any chance of India getting into a conflict with the Houthis. A. India has excellent relations with Iran and India has excellent relations with Israel also. That's point number one. Point number two. We are not going to war against the Houthis. We are just protecting ourselves. And we have been in constant touch with the Iranians. So there is no, there is no problem like that. And Hussein. Hello, sir. My name is Hussein. Hello, Hussein. My question is, recently there is news that Tesla is not coming to India. So should government give grand subsidy to electric car and bike manufacturers so that we have better in-house technology instead of relying on foreign brands? Hussein ji, uh, Tesla said that it will come to India. I covered a part of this yesterday. Tesla said that it will come to India, but it's delayed, but it went to China rather. So I don't know whether Elon Musk will come to India or not and whether their investment is still happening or not. I think it should. I think it should. But uh, you see, India is already giving a lot of subsidies. In fact, uh, more than 70% of the car market is owned by Tata. 70% of the electric car market. Uh, it's owned by Tata and a very significant amount of, I think, 9% or something is is controlled by Mahindra. So, uh, Indian cars are doing phenomenally well. There are other countries also that are selling cars. And uh, I think Tesla is more of finesse, is very important. And I think Tesla is the most important automobile company in the world today. I, I will say that. Tesla is the most important automobile company. But India has its own ecosystem of manufacturing electrical cars and India last year manufactured uh, uh, electrical Mercedes. So I think there is going to be a plethora of cars coming in in India which are run on electricity and India has already said that you know a couple of decades down the line it plans to be carbon neutral. So I think this is a very very important part of India's journey towards carbon neutrality and uh, yes Tesla is most welcome. Tesla will create a world class EV manufacturing ecosystem in India but if Tesla does not come Okay, the India will have to do it and India is already doing it. Thank you very much for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. If you like this video, press the like button, subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Matram, Bharat Matram, Jai.